Okay. Now let's go for the demo. Uh, so this is how the playground looks, right? So there is a log out courses and leave everything. But when I said active learning, what I meant is, see, I, I believe like reading gives a lot of active learning as compared to watching videos. You can match this with like you actually looking at Netflix and versus like you actually reading something on your laptop, right? Both are very different ways of learning. One is like very passive where there is one way dialogue. One is very active where you are actually putting effort in reading, right? So first is like the primary format for the playground that I picked was text first. There is another reason for it. The reason is because when you write a text like this, so and this is like two books worth of text in playground. When you write this, this has to follow certain flow. You can't, in videos, you can just like, I think what Jeff Bezos said, says, right? Like in videos, you're trying to talk from a presentation and in presentation, you can leave gaps. Nobody will question. But when you write a six pager, and in this case, this is a 600 pager, right? You can't uh, sort of, you can't miss something because it has to follow certain flow, right? The second reason was because I'm very comfortable with writing uh, because Tech Simplified sort of proves that. And I love that if I can simplify things in a way that everybody can understand who's reading it, right? So that's the that's the primary format of Playground. But more than that, one of the big problems in books that I've seen is a book is very, very taxing. Like you pick a 600 pages book, you're like, how am I going to get through it? And which is why it's very important to use technology to our advantage and say that, okay, you read this much. This is an introduction to Playground you click the continue button and you get to the next thing. So what makes playground effective? Active learning. This is a learning pyramid. Like but you learn, you retain a lot by teaching others, but you retain a lot by practicing discussion groups, demo. Lecture like has just 5% retention. Reading has even better than that, right? Something which wets the hypothesis. Okay, continue. What else uh, Deepak has to write? So learning transfer, something that we just discussed, right? And then comparing that with like books without assessment have Lower active learning, books with assessment have higher active learning, lectures have lower active learning. Playground app tried to sort of optimize on both axes, which is like you are actively learning and there's also high amount of learning transfer. We'll come to that. And then you move forward, but then you're faced with a question. Okay, great. You have been reading it. Great. Now try to answer this question, which of the following help in learning transfer. Pick top two, right? And you are like, okay, access to study content anytime. No, not in learning transfer. Practice in every session. Yes. Solve the central growth problem. Yes, the natural one I showed you and case study. I feel that the practice can be there, but possibly I should pick this one. And that's a correct one. So it's very, uh, I, I think when you go through it, it will feel very, very immersive. At least like that's what I've heard from like uh, 45 folks who actually primarily studied through this playground. So this is this was in beta for quad three and people actually studied from it and then had a Q&A session with me, right? I would say based on the feedback, this is a lot improved now, but at least this is beta tested. This is not going out in the world just like that, right? And so on and so forth. So this is the first aspect, the interaction bit, which is a very unique way of learning. The second bit is in the side nav, you can see like various chapters. So I said that, okay, it will be active learning. And then I said that it should have a holistic syllabus. Now let's go to the holistic syllabus. The holistic syllabus, if you look at this, uh, let's not go to growth problem statement. We'll go to that later. The holistic syllabus is basically saying that no matter where you are as a PM, no matter what problem you have, can you grow from there? And what would you need to learn to actually grow from there? And that is the problem with which I started this whole thing. And which is why you see like it starts with building thesis of the product. Thesis of the product is very common in venture capital and investors. But I feel that PMs also need to own the thesis of the product, which is the holistic view of the product or thesis of the product. So first you build the holistic view of the product. By the way, like if you understand the holistic view framework, one, it helps in interviews, which, are, which a lot of people have told me. But second, it also helps you very quickly get a grasp on what is important for the company or product you are managing on and what is not important, right? So you start with thesis. Uh, you build the thesis for Natura, which is a central case, right? And you go with basically saying that, okay, if I have now this thesis, the next question I need to ask is, can this product grow? Which is where you ask the question, does it meet the necessary and sufficient criteria of scalability? Does it have the PMF? Is it pre-PMF? What do I do if it is pre-PMF to take it to PMF? If it is PMF, what else do I need to see as a sufficient criteria of scalability, right? You learn how to market size, you learn what monetization is, you learn what channels are and all that. And by the time you have moved till module four, you have a very strong view on whether the product is struggling with pre-PMF or it is struggling post-PMF, right? Which is a weak PMF or weak acquisition or weak monetization. And after this, once you have understood this, the next thing you do is one of my favorites, which is you build a growth model. And growth model is actually like the way I see it, growth model will actually help you put the right expectations to the management on what is the growth target you can achieve. One of my favorite anecdotes is when I actually cut down the growth target of a big company, by 70%, 
by just creating growth models and showing that, okay, what we are seeing does not make a lot of sense because if you put it in a growth model, we are never going to hit that 5 million DAO sort of goal, right? So that is growth model. And uh, then you go into like layer by layer, you go into acquisition, but not just paid acquisition. You actually focus on what's product's role in acquisition, how can product grow acquisition. You go into retention, and by retention, you break retention into activation, habit formation, engagement, churn, resurrection, right? So this is the central layer of growth. This is where you come up with a lot of ideas to how to grow product, right? And we just don't focus on saying that, okay, uh, there is a problem with activation. We actually say that, can you have frameworks to solve activation problem? Now, solving activation problem in itself is a 60, 70 pages or at least 30, uh, around 10,000 word sort of uh, section with a lot of questions. And then you finally go into something which is one of my favorite, which is product marketing, where you'll talk about uh, user research, positioning, monetization, and finally you graduate to growth strategy. And throughout this, you are solving this growth problem statement. So at end of every section, you actually answer questions related to Natura. In every section, like even if it's not Natura, you answer some questions related to some case or other that we pick. For example, one of the cases around activation is Airbnb. So you actually look at Airbnb's design and you answer objective questions on that design and the choices they have made. Right. So this is basically the crux of growth playground. Like the Crezo is a, a case study covered because Crezo is 3 million and then shut down. And using Crezo, you actually understand the holistic view, how to build theses around the problem. Right. So uh, that would be basically, I said that I'll give you a, we'll solve the syllabus for PMs, which spans from like building the thesis to market sizing to pre PMF to post PMF to retention, activation, acquisition sort of problems to product marketing, which is go to market, monetization, and all that. But we, we said we don't stop there. We will actually show you objective problems. And there are objective problems. In growth modeling, for example, you'll take half an hour to solve a single problem sometimes, right? And, and just to give you a sense of what's the difficulty level, I think most of the people who have gone through this, 45 people who have gone through this, they have an accuracy rate of 50 to 70%. Uh, so it's actually not very easy to sort of score uh, and sort of do good in this playground, which is where like it does a very good job if you are paying a lot of attention, if you are researching, if you're putting in a lot of hard work, because the score that you get at the end of this playground will have a lot of value in the market also. At least that's how I see it, right? This evolving. So that's the objective problem. And then transfer learning, when I said, transfer learning will happen through something which is, again, Okay, transfer learning, let, let me pull it from here. So you see this thing, right? Uh, there's actually a database. Because I said that it should be real life PM, right? It, it should not be like, uh, uh, it should not be like, we are just putting some idea on how to improve Uber and all. So this is actually a database with like more than a million rows uh, across the tables. Like it has like 600K transactions and all that. And you can see like this transaction, purchase ID, user ID, product ID, offer ID, delivery ID. You see the sign uh, up. Just one second. Uh, the database page is not visible. You actually have this, let's say this is what I was saying. You have channels data, which source, which medium sort of took two signups and all. If you don't understand source medium, don't worry. Once you go through the playground, you'll be like a ninja around channels. Funnel data, impressions, clicks, ATC, transactions, marketing spend, because that's important to calculate. CAC, product info, pricing and all. Take rate for the company, which is a business model, ratings, reviews, signups, and finally my favorite one, transactions. Right? Since this is a marketplace, Natura we are talking about, there's a heavy emphasis on transactions, right? And this has like not actually let me why why tell when you can uh, show. Let me check how many rows it has. 300k transactions, right? So 300K transactions, let me see how many users data we have. 600K users because registered, right? You can save query. I think these are like just features. So I'm not going to cover. You can save queries. You can look at query history. You can copy one of the queries. You can just paste it back here. Like these are just features. So this is like you go and you write queries if you actually want to master that at a beginner level. At an advanced level, what I will let and in fact, there will be a video around like how to use it if you don't have time to write queries. But there are two ways. One is like you go to chat GPT and you actually learn how to use it by just giving all this schema and then saying, okay, write me a query that gives me how many transactions happened in June, 2021. And it will actually give you the query and you copy paste that query. And then this finally happens in future. We do see it happening that 
uh, chat GPT layer just comes on top of it and you just do a natural language query, right? So that you can reset that expectations in your job where you can say that, why don't we just use this uh, as the way to query rather than sort of relying on data team for days, weeks to sort of get the data, right? The world is moving very fast. And I feel like if you start using chat GPT in sync with this query uh, playground, I think you can learn the whole thing, how to manage data and how to play around with data very, very quickly. Again, very less role, uh, very low risk environment to learn, right? And that's why the playground. So this is uh, the, the, the one way. The other way is I felt uh, while I was myself going through it, what if I still don't have the time to actually do all this? So in that case, if you're feeling lazy and you are like, okay, I have an analyst team to take care of it, just give me the data. And I will, I will actually sort of, uh, I'll just use that snapshot to sort of do analysis. So for that, I think you can have uh, sheets. There are sheets which talk about in this particular exercise, like every exercise is linked with either saying that you go to query playground and actually query the data, or this is a snapshot of customer cohorts. You use this to answer questions related to retention, right? This does two things. One, like you understand how fundamentally retention gets calculated. Second, you can play around with this data and figure out other patterns like month wise, uh, cohort wise and all that, right? So. There is a data snapshot attached to every numerical problem or every 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 sort of naturalized problem that we have, and then there is uh, that playground, and then there is chart GPT, which you can use always to sort of write queries and put it in playground. So that is the transfer learning part, which is like you have the database, a real database with you, which where you can try to uncover patterns, or if you don't, like we will ask you enough questions to help you uncover those patterns. You can use the same template to uncover patterns in your uh, sort of product. Right, and that's what the transfer learning is. That's how like transfer learning gets optimized for PMs. Uh, so that would be basically the demo of the playground. I will. So just to summarize this for you, uh, we are almost at the end. There are 600 objective problems. There is 100 plus hours of interactive content. Uh, content. By the way, like there is video library with lectures also. So there are after every module, like there is a video lecture of two two and a half hours, uh, which I you basically I taught in previous cohorts, but I have removed like all the Q and A part because. Uh, I felt like it's important for privacy reasons, but the whole content, like the two hour of content for every module is there uh, in the playground. So if you just want to sort of say that, okay, I will solve problems. I don't want to go through the whole theory or I want an easier way to go through theory and then I can quickly go through the whole playground. I think you can rely on these video lectures, right? There's database research summary and all. There's a Slack community, which you can join. There, there's a Slack icon there on the uh, right left, uh, right top, which you can join and you can ask questions and there will be certain SLA for those questions, which is like, I try to do it in real time, but as you know, like PMs have other work. So the SLA is around 24 hours. Within 24 hours, you'll get the doubts resolved. Beyond the playground, I think some couple of pretty exciting things are going on, which I felt will solve for other problems. For example, job search, interview prep and all that. So one is to improve transfer learning and to build your domain knowledge as a PM. We have now started conducting regular live case study sessions on the HBS model. So it's basically, if you look at the recent case study, we did two case studies so far. And both were like three, three hours long, two to three hours long. And uh, the problem statement is shared with the group and people come prepared in these. But if you see like it covers everything from how phone pay, let's say started to what is the current status to what are the financials and what do financials tell us about phone pay, where it's moving, where it's not moving. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. To sort of what are the competitors and why is a certain competitor like PTM ahead of phone pay, right? So all this information, uh, just all this information and then discussion around it, back and forth discussion around it for two to three hours. And I feel this is magnificent because once you have learned the growth concept, once you have gone through the playground, the best way to learn from there is actually dive deeper into case studies like HBS does, right? Uh, and you can learn a lot about product growth, uh, decision strategy. I, I feel like this will actually help people build a strategic bent of mind because the leadership at top levels is actually doing this day in day out, right? They're thinking of based on the financials, what are the decisions we are taking and all that based on the competition, what are the decisions we are taking? So this is basically the regular live case sessions, uh, which I would say like it would have like around six to eight case sessions this year. And they will span industries from B2B to B2C to let's say early stage to mid stage to late stage and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm planning to do actually 10, but uh, I'm just sort of not over committing and saying six to eight, at least live case sessions of three hours each which covers almost everything that you learn in the course uh, and where we do a lot of live Q&A around these cases. The second is exclusive community event. So this is something of a realization which came to me late that accidentally I have built a strong community, a community of strong PMs, like 200 odd strong PMs. And they can benefit a lot from each other. Like if you want to go out in US, 
there is somebody that you can always take funda from. If you want to join a certain company, you can always check about how they build products from somebody. You can get referrals and all that. I feel like we haven't used the community to the full extent, but the good thing is the foundation is already there. Like these are like 150, 200 folks who are already engaged. And if we just get them mingle more, if they, if we just orchestrate how the community is sort of growing, it can help each other a lot. And I, I think the first meetup is happening on 3rd of February in Bangalore. Uh, so hopefully like I'll definitely see some of the earlier cohort members of PM Curve. But yeah, if you join in, hopefully we'll see you there as well. Right, so beyond the playground, two things which solve two problems. Especially how do you learn beyond the playground? And uh, how do you build a strategic bent? And second is how do you use community for anything and everything, including product interviews, including fundas, including like some problem that you're facing, including some tool information and all that.